Welcome everybody and welcome to Sarah <laughs> Buckland. We are so excited to have you on our podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, as you know, Donna and I do not have podcast guests very often. I think we've we've had one. We've had one we've podcast guest. We've had one, guest. one, yeah. <laughs> Oh my Very God, early on. privileged. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, because we really, um, we've made a commitment to each other. We really only want podcast guests on that we feel will really add value and yeah. offer some gold to our audience. And we believe in you so much and we have just watched yes. you tap into your zone of genius with your sales knowledge over the past year. It's just been incredible to watch. So, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, for those of you who are listening and watching, we met Sarah. I think it was about a year ago. I'm actually not sure when it was, but it feels like a year. It <laughs> and was it's around exactly at this time. Wow. Mm. Look at what can happen in a year. Um, <laughs> and and you were in a real pivoting moment in your business, and you actually had a design business at that I point did. in time. Yes, and then you realized and I remember we were talking to you and you were like oh I'm, I'm good with sales I'm all over the sales and we were like wow and you were like wow that is so amazing <laughs> because that is the opposite of most graphic designers most yes. graphic yeah. designers are so <laughs> fearful and shut down with sales and we're like this girl she's going places she's all over yeah. the sales <laughs> business I was just like no no I'm good with that but I need help with this yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes and then we noticed you pivoted into the world of sales strategy and helping people to you know, raise their rates and get confidence with their sales strategies and to book higher ticket items and that sort of thing. It was just yeah. really exciting to watch you tap into your zone of genius and how that happened. But for the people who don't know much about you, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your journey and how you have gotten to this point. Yes, absolutely. Please. Thank you, ladies. Hi, guys. I'm Sarah. So I spent six years in corporate London in sales and business development for a big uh, global media company. Loved that job, but wanted to quit to go traveling, you know, go find myself around the world. Yeah. Um, so did that. And I took a long enough break that I got a taste of what life was like not being in the office. <laughs> so I was like, huh. <laughs> it's all yeah, it takes a little taste yeah exactly when you've had a long enough time away from corporate and other people's policies procedures rules way of doing things um and I'd had to take a career gap in order to do something that I enjoyed and I was like well it shouldn't have to be one or the other why can't I have both <laughs> why <laughs> millennial, I want it all yeah so, yeah I was just like I'm, I'm gonna find a way to start my online business so that I can be still bringing money in, but still enjoying myself and go traveling <laughs> obviously COVID had other plans um, so I didn't know how to apply any of my sales knowledge at the time so I actually retrained took an online course did loads of studying this is when lockdown has happened I just got home so I'd got the time <laughs> going on Skillshare going on YouTube learning all the Adobe <laughs> all the tricks and, and whatnot to start a graphic design business so that I could be offering branding. So it was a whole new skill, but I could apply a bit of the sales as in what a wider brand means, not just the design side, to be able to market that to my clients. Like here's why you need branding and what a brand is. Whilst right. I was trying to get my design skills better to match what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. um, but fast forward six months of doing my graphic design business um I've made friends with loads of designers they're such a pally bunch <laughs> yeah I found that in dms I was seeing people who were way better skilled than I was obviously I was all self-taught from Skillshare seeing people who were technically so good and had got really high-end designs and could be landing really high ticket clients who were charging so much little than I was that I was like <laughs> Well, something's gone wildly wrong here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wildly right in your case. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I'm not that good and I'm four times the price that you are. So yeah. how are you surviving? Like, this yeah. isn't even a competitive business for you. You'd have to take on 10 clients and be working every hour of the day, seven days a week in order to make that profitable. And people would be yeah. like, it's really hard. And I'm like... What? So it was through various DM conversations, helping people. I'd ask questions and be like, well, have you done this? And have you asked the client this? And what about this? And 
to the point that someone said, Sarah, I, sh I should be charging you for the advice that you've given me because it's helped my business so much. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's where we're meant to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where you're that meant to be. That is so good. Beautiful. Thank you. So I am much happier because I've found, like you say, I've found what makes me feel good. I'm working in a way that makes me feel happy. I've yeah. stepped into my zone of genius, but I've got such yeah. a more unique insight because of taking that time. So Yeah, absolutely. Really and I think helpful. that's why our beautiful audience is going to really relate to you, Sarah, because of that, because you've had that insight into our industry and really understand that it is tricky. It's really tricky. And it's fear that a lot of our um, designers have when it comes to pricing and being confident and really being able to yeah. show up and charge what they're worth. So that's yeah. the main thing that we want to chat with you about today, because <laughs> you were doing it and you understood it and you had the confidence to charge what you were worth. So we'd love for you to tap into some of the strategy that you used and share that with our audience today and, and help them and give them some tips around what they can do to um, elevate their confidence. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so one of my main tips of me being confident, even as an unconfident graphic designer, is that I was really sure of my process. I knew that my customer experience, once they'd booked on, that that bit was seamless and it was impressive. So having a customer portal, a client portal, where they could see everything and having all the tasks broken down and them aligned to some tasks, um, just being able to invite them into that experience, clients find really, really impressive. So even me that was a, a newbie, a beginner, they'd be like, oh, she's really got her stuff together here. Wow. And yeah. from a making your life easier perspective, that CRM tool would email the client with anything that was aligned to them. So any task with their name, the tool would send them a reminder email, not me. So it's less work for me to do. Perfect. So just by having mm -hmm. like nice onboarding experience, so everything communicated up front, all the boundaries, all the expectations, then being invited into this client management tool where they had full access and visibility to everything that I was doing. So they didn't have to be sending follow-up questions or what we're working on next and having multiple feedback points as well mm. my experience working in a coffee shop the equivalent of starbucks but it's one called costa here we were really big on customer experience brand loyalty so everything was about the customer so i still carry that with me it's like ingrained mm. into me now I love it so yeah i think especially with something like branding a lot of people don't know what that process involves at all. So I tried to involve customers at as many points as I could, not to a point where it like hold me up, but just include them to be like, I'm doing this now. What is your insight or what is your feedback? Okay, then we're going to move on to this bit. What is your insight? What is your feedback? So that it's more of a handheld journey and that they feel with me as opposed to I'll go and do the work and then I'll hand it over and you're not involved in the process. Yes, right. So it was a much more walking hand in hand. They'd got visibility, they felt taken care of. And then once it was handover, not just being like, there's your files, there you go, but yep. looking for ways to make it a bit more impressive or add a wow factor and make the offboarding experience just as impressive as the onboarding experience. Mm. So, yeah. So it sounds like you had these beautiful systems underpinning your business when you're running the design business that helped you with your confidence. Like it was like, well, this is a no brainer because you were so taken care of. I'm going to nurture you. I love that. I love all your nurture sequences that you have. And we're always talking about that sort of thing as well. We're all we, about it. Yeah, mm. we love it. We love, love, love those beautiful touch points along the way making sure people feel seen and heard and you've got a real partnership with your clients it's so beautiful so one of the things that designers really struggle with um, in particular designers it's a bit of a generalization but they are terrified of the discovery call or the clarity call so hopping on and talking about their process and talking about maybe their prices and going through this thing so uh, why do you think designers are so terrified of this? Like, it's a funny one, isn't there's it? There's definitely a lot of introverts in the design community. So I think yeah. just the how face front it is <laughs> for that period of time. And I totally get that it's nerve wracking, which is why mm. I was like, no, 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 I'm fine with that. But that's because I've gone through a lot of sales calls 
I've already gone through the awkward, the cringe, you know, I've already said the wrong things and you can't take it back. And you're yeah. like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so true. That experience is is everything, isn't it? It is. And on discovery calls as well, it's such a warmer environment. It's not like you're cold calling someone that doesn't want to speak to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas you're getting on the call with someone that does want to speak to you. He's looking forward to hearing your voice and your insight and is genuinely thinking is this the person that could help me it's a warm bath equivalent of what of what a normal sales call is yes you're so right that's so right and and actually just um the way that you've put that there that they are wanting to, to hear your insights they are looking forward to talking to you they want to be there that in itself would settle the nerves you know for a lot of people just to understand that that's some really great insight the way that you've worded that that they want to be there. They're excited by it. They're excited to sit and listen to what you've got to say. And also what you were speaking to you about it being a practice, essentially. It is a practice. Mm. You've you've gone through the trenches, essentially, with, with the, the embarrassing <laughs> moments. And I can relate to that as well because I was very, very shy about public speaking and being front and centre. And then my career path, I went to lecturing and speaking in, in, in business groups and, you know, on stage and all that sort of thing. And I really had to just do it. I had to work through the nerves. I had to just stuff up a few times and it just got easier and easier every time. I think a lot of people don't realize it will actually get easier. Mm, Yeah, massively. It's like anything, isn't it? Like anything that's new or outside your initial comfort zone is scary at first but that's the the business owner entrepreneurship life is yeah. push yourself a little bit out of there and you'll discover a new realm that actually once you start using calls you're going to be saving time because you haven't got to do weeks of back and forth email communication where things get lost mm-hmm. you can stand behind your prices and you don't get ghosted for it because someone can see your value and has built a relationship with you not an email there's Love so it. many benefits and also like when you do book that client you have a better working relationship because they've got a better relationship with you they trust you as a person so your whole experience from the yes is going to be a, a more enjoyable one absolutely so I, I'm pro yeah. call <laughs> all the way through yeah yeah, yeah. we're pro call as well from a um, designer getting insights perspective as well because you can just pick up on the cues you can pick up on words that they're using you can pick up a little bit of body language and whether they're lifted up by something or a little bit like oh I'm not sure about that because I think designers are very intuitive and you miss those cues yeah. if you just via email it's it's not going to be the same. Exactly. It's you not. can't get any of the, the tone of voice or the volume or intonation or any of that. Yeah. So one of my clients, I encouraged her to start using discovery calls. And after she'd had a call, she messaged me to say, I'm so glad I've started using calls because this lady had, had filled out a questionnaire and I'd got one impression of her from the words that she used. But actually when I had a call with her, I realized that she was completely different and I'll now be able to do better branding that is much more her now that I've got to know her yes and it can go both ways can't it it's like it can be you go wow they're really different it's different to what I thought it would be this is great or it can be like oh it's not what I thought it was going to (laughs) be not sure if I want to work with this person it's maybe not a good fit after all because on paper things can seem different absolutely can be a good gatekeeper and that's the thing we're, we're always telling our designers our audience to look for cues on every level, look for cues that they can afford your service. That's the one thing. Yeah. Look for cues that they understand what you do. That's yeah. really key and, and understanding what you can deliver and what you can't deliver. And, and to see them in person is really powerful, powerful stuff. So they yeah, get through their discovery call, they get over their nerves, then that gets to the part where they need to talk about price, Sarah. So and <laughs> this is this is where they freeze. They choke up, they freeze, they brush over it and, and say they'll put something in writing. But what we encourage is that we discuss pricing right now because, again, it's that yeah. gatekeeper. We need to understand yeah. that the person we're talking to understands the value and can afford us. So what advice can you give to our beautiful designers out there who are on their first discovery call or just new at discovery calls and they get to yeah. the pricing? They've got to talk about it. What's your advice? So in the lead up to getting to the pricing conversation, I'd say make sure that you've asked, you've made it all about them, not about you, so that they've had plenty of airtime and that they feel like seen, heard, understood. 
So you've not done that much talking. You've asked all the right questions about their business. They're really invested. You've got a, a body of information about what they need, when they need it, what they're looking to achieve, you know, what their current struggles are. And you've then pitched your one main service, not talked about everything that you do. Because <laughs> I know with designers that yes. so <laughs> this is amazing. And I've got five different packages and here's why you need branding and la da 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 da. <laughs> just mention only the service that is the best fit based on the answers that they've given you you can still say I've got three packages and I can send them over after but based on what you told me this is the package for you because it does xyz and it will help you to do xyz so only mention the thing that's most relevant so by the time then that you get to the pricing conversation you've got what they want and you've just given them a best match fit and you've given them your best recommendation so they're not overwhelmed with over information at this point. They're locked on to what you're saying and they trust you as an advisor. So just keep that in mind before you freak yourself out over prices. They trust you. You've recommended something. You've given them a solution to everything that they've said, any problems that they've got and all of that. So when it comes to the actual pricing conversation is don't say the price, say the investment for this package is, because yeah. investment implies gain, yeah, whereas a price insinuates loss. So we're going to gain from this. Yes. Um, the investment for this package is, and when you're saying the number, like if it's a long number, one of the things that makes it easier for me to say, if it's a four-figure um, investment, say the numbers individually. So the investment for this package is 3254. Wow. Physically. Love that. Because it's it's yeah, easier for that. you to say and it's easier for them to hear rather than 3,524. Like it's hard to digest for you to say and them to hear. So that's something yes. that just makes that's it a little bit easier. Also, it's quicker and easier. So it sounds shorter because you're not getting strung up on the words, like the length of the word. And then when you said the price in digestible numbers, then shh. <laughs> that's the hardest part right yeah Pause. exactly even if you have to put yourself on mute do whatever you have to do but just <laughs> what, no, no verbal diarrhea at this point not allowed to spill over blah, 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 blah. oh but if you can't afford it or if you, maybe we could do this or we could do this package or if you wow. can't do that yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> the investment for this package is how does that sound to you silence yeah because and just give Love the it. person room to breathe because mm-hmm. you shouldn't be making assumptions about what they can or can't afford or what they see as high or low money. like yeah you we have no idea someone might be new into business but have, have just had a massive investment given to them or they might be five years into business but funds are tight you know you, you cannot make generalizations about what's what someone else sees as valuable or not so you just yeah. need to Love say your price Stand behind it with confidence because you've just given them the absolute all singing, all, all dancing package, the only package that is a solution to their problems. And then you need to just give them time to sit with it and not talk over it. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Let, let it land. We say that a lot. Just mm. let things land. And that's, the, that's one of the hardest things, I think, when we make assumptions about what people can or can't afford and that we want to fill the space. We want them to be comfortable. And what that does is the adverse thing. It actually makes them really uncomfortable, makes everybody uncomfortable. So we love yeah. that advice, Sarah. Love it so much. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah the awkward pause, it, it does make people move. So you can't be the one that moves. Otherwise, you'll do yourself a disservice. That's where they're yes. talking over, like, but if that's a problem, we can always do da 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 or, or but I don't mean it and da 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 That's where discounting often happens, whereas that person doesn't necessarily need a discount or want a discount. But if you've spoken first and you've offered something that they didn't even want or need. <laughs> that is a really similar process to what we have in our 12-week academy. We have a module called the Ultimate Briefing System, and in that we have a discovery call. We call it a clarity call. We keep changing the name of it because we're like, oh, is it a discovery call? Is it a clarity call? But we've landed on clarity call recently because we like that idea of, you know, you're clarifying the next steps forward in, yeah. in being able to provide a firm formal proposal for this client and a contract 
and you need to yeah. gather all that information to make sure you've got it right. But it's so great the way that you've described it. We're always talking about designers need to be the guide. Are you a Story Brand fan, Sarah? Yeah, so yeah. the Story Brand by um, Donald Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, Miller, he talks about it's really important to be the guide. And and when you step up and say the, the perfect package for you, the package that I feel is the best fit for you, this is going to work for you, using that kind of language, it's very certain. And then they're feeling very looked after, like, oh, okay, they really can see yeah. this. Yeah. And it's, yeah, exactly. It's going to happen. Okay, all right. You're then yeah. the trusted advisor. They're in safe hands. You can still follow up with information they can read for themselves, but you know they're still going to go with what you recommended nine times out of ten. Yes, because they trust you, that you've listened to them, you've actively listened and understood their needs and now they trust you. And that's the most important yeah. thing is that you gain that trust through this process, which is great. And yeah. I love that you mentioned don't make assumptions about what people can and can't afford. And I love that you made the distinction that somebody can be in business for many years but be in a really tight spot with their business because often we just make an assumption if you're still in business at that point, you must be doing really well. And if you're at the beginning of business, things would be tight for you. So I love that you've really made us think about the fact that it doesn't matter where you are in business, we can't make assumptions about that. And what you need to do is shine the spotlight on the value of your work and be confident about the value yeah. of your work. And that's it. That's what you're selling. That's what you need confidence in, not about anybody else, just about you. Yeah, so that was a exactly. really beautiful distinction. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that helps with pricing as well, I'm sure you teach this in your academy, but is to have some pricing hierarchy in your packages so that if you're getting the feeling from someone that this is really, really valuable and they need a higher package, that you've got a top tier package to go to. But if at the point of the pricing conversation that's not going to work or they need something a bit smaller, that you've come down a level and you've got those tiers that will allow you to step up or step down to match to, you know, the suitability of the client and the budget of the client. Mm. Great. Love that. We love packages. We're mm. always talking about packages and helping the students unpack their particular packages. Just recently, actually, we've been talking a lot about that because a lot of designers they don't want to just offer the high-end deluxe service. They really love the the startups and the bespoke businesses and the ones that need that nurturing and they're going to grow, but they're a bit smaller. But we're always trying to help designers to price it so that you're not losing out. You're not losing out because exactly. of what you're offering. You're still getting really well remunerated based on what you're offering. So maybe they can't afford that high tier package. That's fine. They're not ready for that yet, but they can have this, this, and this. Yeah. yeah. And from the customer yeah. perspective, um, this is where designers need to, as much as possible, put themselves in the customer's shoes, the client's shoes, and remember how little they knew or what they knew from those list of deliverables. Before you learn design, how many of those things would you know what they meant? <laughs> Not many. I know for me, I only learned all the lingo once I'd started doing design. So put yourself in your customer's shoes. Yes, you've talked through why it's important and why it's valuable, but there's still a lot of things in that package that they don't know what it means or why it's important. So this is why it's important to have pricing at like three different tiers is because the customer and the client will use that as a gauge of which is the best for me because they don't know what all of those packages mean. So... Like I know from clients that I've worked with that they sometimes can have packages that are all priced the same thing, but it might be like print package, this price, digital package, this price. And I'm like, that doesn't help your client <laughs> have stuff that is varied because they're using the price to tell them what's important. Right. <laughs> they're trying to gauge from here. Yeah. Whereas if you have different levels, you can vary up what things go in where, but just let them choose based on the level that they can see because they don't know what those things mean. <laughs> yeah, right. that's so, so true. Meet them where they're at. It's an educational process as, as well. We're always assuming by the time a potential client has gotten to the discovery call phase, there's already been a bit of education going on mm. so far, like maybe from the initial intake form on the website, from the information that's on socials from the information that's on their website as well and all those sorts of touch points along the way. So it's not like a complete surprise, but it is yeah. a designer's job to educate. It really is. It really educate is. Educate the audience. Yeah. 
And like you were saying, Sarah, by the time you get to the discovery call, it's a warm call mm. because of all of those yeah. lead, lead touch points that happen prior. They really do know what you're about. Essentially, they know your they know your voice. They know your messaging. They probably know a little bit about your pricing if you've had an initial gatekeeper on the initial touch points, so pricing yeah. brackets and things like that. So it is warm. They do have this knowledge and understanding of, of what you've got and going on. And the more that I know designers can freak out about creating video content as well or doing talking stories, but the more that you can get comfortable doing that, the easier the discovery call process is going to be because this client or prospective client has already seen you and they've built a relationship with your face and maybe they've got to know your accent or what you find valuable or what your dog's name is or how you drink your coffee. <laughs> they've already yes. got that warm relationship. So they feel like they know you, even if you don't know them. So you've got yeah, to treat it as in, they might have been watching your stories for three months before they made that call. So oh, yeah. <laughs> they do know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's exciting for them, I think, as well, when they do get to speak to you in person with their needs they get to talk about what yeah. they need from you based on your zone of genius yeah. whatever it is that you're they offering they might have already seen you work on five different projects that they love the outcome and they've been thinking yeah. god I can't wait for my chance to come and they've been excited yeah. about this for ages <laughs> yeah what I love Sarah that's bubbling to the surface for me in everything that you're saying is it's like a paradigm shift you're spinning on its head the fear that designers usually have it's because they don't feel enough I'm not enough. My work's not enough. This is not going to be good enough and that type of thing. What you're saying is they're excited to meet you. They've been watching you and almost crushing on you. They know what to expect because they know your messaging and your voice and it's exciting for them. They're looking forward to it. So just that little shift of having to show up and and be, you know, something completely different to what's already been out there. It's (laughs) beautiful. It's that lovely little paradigm shift. So thank you for that. I hope that is landing for our audience today, just to know that they want to be on this call with you. Massively. One of my past clients, we were chatting yesterday and she was saying, you know, I I still don't fully understand what my unique selling point is, like what makes me different to everybody else. And for the record, this girl is very successful. She's built an audience that's well over 10K followers. She's been able to up her prices to match the the authority that she's now built. Um, You probably know, but from us in the UK, we have very particular accents depending on where we're from. So that makes you definable just because people can really hear your difference. Mm. So all of these little things, I'm like, you are completely different to everyone else. A, stop comparing yourself. Like put the blinkers on, just you do, you stay in your lane, don't watch what everybody else is doing. But between yeah. your style, as in your design style, that's one USP. The things that make you you, your personality type, your accent, the things that you enjoy on the weekend, those are all things that make you you and make your design experience. So that's a unique selling point. People are building a relationship with you and what you know and what you can offer them. So I know designers yeah, I can be it. guilty of doubting themselves and thinking well why am I good enough or why me over everybody else but Mm, let the customer choose that they've got the choice of who they can follow and they're following you they're wanting to see you and your stories and your insights so let them be the judge of who they want to work with (laughs) yeah that's right love it love that shout that out everybody I really love that yeah. So their uniqueness was right in front of their face and they just didn't realize it. They just didn't Massively. know it. That, that all you need is you. Mm. We were, when we first worked together, because she, she was one of the people that I first had an intensive with when I flipped into sales coaching. Cause she'd already known me as a designer and she trusted me. So she was just like, if I'm going to work with anyone, <laughs> I want it to be you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So we worked together. And since then, I think she was charging somewhere around 150 to 200 pounds for a project whereas now whole project whole project if to be fair it was probably packaged up smaller as just you know here's your logo here's your business card this that and the other whereas now she's told me that she is pitching for projects that are six and a half k well done yeah that's amazing in about six months She's just like, at this point, I actually don't care if I even win this project because the confidence that it took me to even put that number is just it, like she's blown awesome. away. 
game changer. That's a life changing shift, isn't it? That's yeah, a game changer. It yeah. And it's huge mm. down to confidence as well. Being able to back herself to to ask for that figure and not talk over it. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. And that's it. It's like, you know, that age old question, how do you raise your rates? How do you raise your prices? You just do it. <laughs> and yes. you back yourself yeah. in that. Like I love yeah. that. And it's really interesting hearing you talk about designers who are scared on camera. You were talking about reels and stories mm. and that sort of thing before because a lot of designers hide behind beautiful graphics. Even with their reels, their beautiful <laughs> graphics and beautiful videos and they're not really getting in there with their beautiful faces and sharing their voice and, and their interests and all that sort of thing. And, and I'm just thinking that if you want to get good at discovery calls, that's a good place to start. Just show up yeah, on, it is. on stories. Especially because with stories and reels, you can film it first before you share it. So mm. if you're not used to getting on camera or it freaks you out a little bit or you stutter over your words, you can edit it before anyone sees it. So you've got that little comfort blanket. I would yes. always say try and post the first version because each time you refilm something, you lose a little bit of your, your personality, your oh. spark, just... Yeah. Pre repetition. <laughs> but those one take wonders are brilliant. Sometimes I make the mistake of um not being ready. Like I might be in my pajamas and I'm just thinking, oh, I might do a reel and I'll set it all up and I'll just do a little quick riff to see if it's gonna work. And then I go, damn it. That's the best version I've got. That was the one. Not a script of <laughs> yeah. makeup on and I'm in my pajamas. Oh. And then I try to do it later and it's just crap. Yeah. So oh yeah. get out there on the reels, get out there on the stories. We wanna yeah. see your yeah. faces. Love that advice. Yeah. That's a great strategy to build confidence. My strategy from the beginning on the design side is because I knew the quality of my work wasn't going to be as high as other designers that have been doing it years. Um, but doing a good old competitor swaps, I could see that people that were on Instagram, not many people at that point were using video content and not many people were showing their face. So I was like, right, well, here's how I'm going to be different. I'm going to be using video content and showing my face as often as possible from the get-go because I know that the app builds trust. So for me, who actually isn't that confident about my design skills, this is going to mask while I tighten this up in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, you. That's amazing. I just love that so much, Sarah. Like we said, the confidence that you show in this area is your zone of genius. And that's why the pivot in your business, right? It's just makes yeah. complete sense to Chris and I. As observers, people who watched <laughs> you flourish. I know you guys have been involved in the whole start to end process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It just makes sense to us, like watching you now and seeing you. We we actually go, look at her go. This is amazing. So it really is important to build that confidence and to be doing something that you really believe in. And I think like yeah. you were saying in the very beginning of today, the foundation of having those really good systems and procedures and knowing that they have yeah. got you, that knowing that that is where the value is, will help you to show up with confidence. And not being afraid to make mistakes because looking at my journey, I, I beaded myself up almost when I pivoted because I was like, God, why didn't you see this from the start, Sarah? You know, you've, you've just cost yourself six months. You're behind. You've gone too slow. But the community that I built at that time meant that I was able to pivot and I already had those relationships so yeah. don't ever see a failure or a challenge as something that you've lost because you'll learn more from the times that it went wrong and that will shape the person that you become. Definitely. Yeah, that's so great. So great. Well, um, I think you know this about us, Sarah. We choose a word every year for the, our intention for the year ahead. And as um, this particular episode will be released in the new year, we can talk to you about our word that we're releasing in the new Ooh. year. So what, what we'd love to, we're, we're going to put you on the spot and ask you about your intention for your word for your year ahead. So our word, Chris and I have got for this coming year is attraction. So the way that we're going to frame it is attract in lowercase and action in capitals. So we've been a bit greedy. Mm -hmm. We have found a word that's got I two like beautiful it. words within it. And it's all about this beautiful attraction and the action that is required to make things happen. So what we are wanting to ask you is what will your word be? We haven't given you a lot of time to think about it, but <laughs> what off the cuff, what word would you like to have as your intention moving into 
2022? Ooh, you can change that's a big it. Big question. <laughs> um, it is. I'm at a point of thinking, right? What what does uncomfortable growth look like for me now? Like I push myself outside of comfort zones. So so what's next? And really, anything is possible. That's how I'm viewing things. Is there's there's no limit here. So I would say aspirational. Yeah. Because I don't know what direction I'm going to go in yet, but I'm starting to map out my visions and my dreams. And there's there's nothing too small. Like the future is bright. Um, there's lots of things that I want to do and that I want to be taking positive steps forward from the get-go, you know, thinking, right, what can I be doing in Q1 that are going to help me support my 2022 goals or my bigger vision goals? So what action yeah. can I be taking now? So, you know, maybe that's, a little bit of public speaking here or there or maybe that's uh doing more podcasts for example get outside my own comfort zone so aspirational <laughs> great that's a great word yeah it is a beautiful word we would love you to have your own podcast Sarah maybe that's on the cards yes yeah. potentially with some of my clients who we use Voxer um to use voice notes all the time and they're like Sarah we really like listening to your voice can you talk to us on a podcast <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That's where it starts, Sarah. That's where it starts. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. And you've got <laughs> so much to share. Mm. The wisdom that you've shared with us today, we're so grateful for that. It's it's just so beautiful. Thank you. And generous of you to share your time with us and with our audience. I remember listening to your podcast and being like, oh, right, I need to write that down. I need to get my notes on <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. But honestly, I can see you having a podcast in the future and maybe we can reciprocate and be guests on your podcast. Yeah. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's in the cards somewhere down the track. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody, you have to follow Sarah on her socials and sign up to her freebies and all that sort of thing. What's the best way people can find you? All your socials, all, all the details. Is- my second home. <laughs> yeah. Instagram is my main platform. So it's Sarah Buckle and Coaching on there. And if you did want to sign up to my freebie, I've got 10 ways that you can be attracting clients on a freebie ready to go if you want to download that. Oh, that sounds yeah, awesome. so there's plenty of uh, reels, me mocking myself, taking the mic, all of that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we will make sure we'll put those into our show notes so that people can find you and can come and stalk you and have fun and get to know you. Thank you so much, yeah. Shady. It's been an honour to be only your second guest and just to chat to you both. Yeah, it's so lovely to see your face and speak in the flesh. It's so nice. Well, almost. Almost. This feels <laughs> like in the flesh now, doesn't it? Zoom. It's become <laughs> yeah. so second nature now. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge today. It has been so wonderful to have you on the podcast. Maybe we'll have you on Thank again. Thank you. Wonderful yes. to be on the podcast. Just chat to you both and come full circle and yeah yeah, it's been awesome being able to keep in touch with you and as I go through such a change over the last year but be able to help more designers now it's such a such a friendly community (laughs) oh they are it is so beautiful to have you in the corner of designers I think there's so many designers that are going to just have aha moments after listening to your advice today and get really excited by the things that you've said and and what you've shared so thank you so much as an example of what's possible because I came into the market really not knowing much about design and my design skills were really not very great but I'm always the opposite I had all of the confidence with none of the backing whereas there's so many designers that have got all the technical ability and they just need the confidence to back themselves they will yes. go leap years so yeah take, absolutely take the confidence of someone that has just taken one course and is now showing up pretending like they know it <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that yeah yeah love it. yes definitely follow Sarah for how to be confident and show up on <laughs> the camera so well so beautifully yeah, yeah. thank you thank All you right. so much ladies you have a beautiful day Have a beautiful day, everybody. Bye. Bye.